This is the official EFL podcast. Hello and welcome back to the preview show. We're back this week with a full EFL schedule and joining me to discuss the action are Leighton Orient captain Joby McEnough and Colchester player coach Jamal Campbell-Rice also joins us. Let's begin though by talking about the two new managerial appointments in the Skybet Championship. First of all, Neil Harris appointed at Cardiff. Joby, you've played at the club. What will it take for him to succeed in South Wales, do you think? It's an interesting one. I think, first of all, Neil Warnock leaving, I think, will divide opinions. Clearly, the club wasn't doing as well as they would have hoped after coming down from the Premier League. But for me, Neil Warnock's a man that time and time again will get things right. But clearly, they've made that decision. And I think for Neil Harris now, it's just about going in and assessing the squad. I'm sure he would have done that and he would know the squad well from, from playing against them. I see a lot of similarities between Cardiff and Millwall in probably what the fans expect. They demand hard work. They demand you know 100% effort from players. So I think that will help him going in there and he'll just try and get the boys really flying about and, and get the crowd back behind them because, again, there's been a lot of um, division, I would say, in the club. So hopefully everyone can get on board and, and really support Neil and, and get the club moving up the table. Yeah, Jamal, everyone knows about Neil Warnock, obviously, and how how much he's done at Cardiff. How hard an act will he be to follow now? Do you know what? Neil Warnock is a fantastic character, loved by his players, the fans and, and football, really. So uh, for Neil Harris coming in, it's going to be difficult for him to come in and replicate that. But he just got to come in and, and, and put his stamp down on the club and do things the way he wants to do things and all the rest of it. Uh, what Warnock's done for Cardiff, I'm sure the, the whole club and the fan base will be eternally grateful to him and I think it's difficult when you try and replicate what a, a previous manager's done you've literally just got to go in there and and stamp down your authority and get get everyone believing in and wanting to do the things that you want want done you know um, so it is a difficult thing but it's what, just one of them things that a new manager has to do yeah, Joby Neil Harris has already said actually that the players will have to get used to the, a different way of working under him could the players find it hard to adjust in, in the short term do you think? Yeah, it can be an issue when a new manager comes in. I think the key I've always found and the ones that have come in and managed to get their ideas across quickly are probably the ones that haven't tried to change too much too soon. I'm sure he will have a clear idea of what he wants his Cardiff side looking like. It's just, again, you know, how quickly do you, do you work on that process? And, you know, I've been really interested to read some of his comments and, and keep an eye on things. And he said it's not going to be wholesale changes and a complete different direction. You know, they've got some real physical players. He's massive on set pieces. Um, you know, he feels it's it's really helped him in his career as a manager. And when you look at stats, you know, they're things that can win you games or lose you games. So I think given that Cardiff were quite a threat from that particular part of the game, I think that's something he'll certainly work on and, and build on and I'll try and get the most out of that. Again, the general stuff comes over a little bit of time and, you know, it's just about getting the players on board as quickly as possible to start getting your ideas across onto the pitch to, to help get results. I think you're, you're right in that, Joe, because uh, the way the way uh, Warnock had Cardiff set up, and it's almost very similar to how Mill was set up with the physicality, set yeah. pieces. They're big on that. So I think I, it's almost like spot on that he really doesn't have to go in there and do much different as he is that type of manager. So could be the perfect man for it. In a trip to, to Charlton first first up, so a tough game to start out for Neil Harris, of course. Uh, Jamal, I think it's fair to say that Cardiff's approach is a little more tried and tested than Barnsley's search for a new man. What should we make of their appointment of Gerhard Struber? Risky, very risky. I think it's always difficult for a manager at any level in any league to come into a brand new country who he hasn't managed in, in, the, in that league or that country. So um, he doesn't know the league. So I'm just hoping that the people around him know, know the league very well, know players and all the rest of it. But it is definitely a risk for me. And I just, I don't think it's an appointment where they could have taken, they should be taking risks on. Obviously, they're struggling at the minute. And uh, they don't, you'd want somebody who's tried and tested, who knows players, who knows teams, who knows the league, who knows who, how to recruit. Obviously, they, they found their man, but hopefully for them, it's the right man because he really has to go in there and he has to, he has to hit the ground running because they, they really haven't got any time to waste. Jamal, it sounds as if you describe as someone like maybe a Neil Warnock there. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm not sure Neil would uh, would fancy the stresses of of that just now and at this stage of his career. But 100, like uh, when you're a team like Barnsley who 
with all due respect, that they're almost punch, punching above their weight at the level with the with the rest of the rest of the teams in the championship to go for somebody like Struber, who, like I said, who who's only had experience being a player and a manager just in in his native Austrian league. It's going to be difficult for him. So anybody from the outside looking in would have thought, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll go and get somebody who knows the league and all the rest of it. He can he can dig them out of it, but. They clearly know something that we don't. Jamal, do you think that they would have gone off, obviously, the previous appointment, obviously, Daniel Stendhal coming in, he actually only had one season, which I found quite interesting at, at Hanover as manager there. And they obviously brought him in and, and he was successful in terms of getting them up. So it's interesting, I think, sometimes as a board, they've they've had a process that they probably feel has worked for them in the past. And it's obviously different circumstances this time around because you're asking that guy to, to really go in and get the players going. So do you think it could be something to do with that? Yeah, absolutely. You never know what goes through board members' heads. There's some of the strange people that I'll come across in football. But yeah, that could be their thinking behind it. But I just think the way that they're where they are now, I just think it's 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 totally it's different risk. circumstance. Yeah. It's just, yeah. I think it's I think it's a massive risk and like with all the money that's in, in football and being relegated and being promoted and all the rest of it, hundred percent that they wanna they'd wanna be staying in the league and I just think that that appointment is a is a huge, huge risk. But I, I see, I see a point where you're coming from. Joby Struber obviously says he, he can keep Barnsley in the league. Is that possible though? Looking at where they are at the minute, already five points away from safety. Well, I think coming in as a new manager, you want to have a positive impact. I think that's the number one objective, really. And I don't think he can say anything else. If I'm if I'm being honest, he's not going to come in and say I think we might struggle here. You know, you look at the table, and I think it is going to be difficult for them. Jamal's alluded to. You look at the squads. You know, the budget of the the team, the fact they've you know only come up this season. And I think just staying up for them would be a major achievement. It's going to be much more difficult given the start they've had. One win in 16 is awful, awful start to the season. And I think that'll be his first target, just getting that win as quickly as possible. You look at, you know, the next games coming up, you know, Blackburn, Middlesbrough is going to be a massive one for them. So for me, in those next couple of games, they need to get a positive result again to get that buy-in because I'm sure the players will be sitting there as we have done in the changing room when a, a bit of a strange appointment is made and you're doing your research, you're on you know, the internet, right? Where's this guy been? How does he work? What are his ideas going to be? So, you know, his first training session, his first meeting are going to be pivotal to how those boys react and whether he gets that impact that the club desperately needs, you know, to try and get them up from the position they're in at the moment. Jamal, you touched on this, but how, how much more difficult will it be for him to, to keep your former club up, especially with him not having that experience working anywhere out outside of Austria, never mind the likes of the championship. Yeah, I feel, I feel, like you said, I just touched on it a little bit, but I just think it's going to be it's, it's going to be a huge, huge task. And Joe just touched on it there, like with the budget that they that they play under, um, like the rest of the team. The championship's not kind to anybody. To a team like Barnsley, like I said, really punching above their weight, having just come up and all the rest of it. It's going to be a tough, tough task. And, and listen, I, I, we, we've all seen it before. Miracles can happen, but the game the games come thick and fast, and, and they're, they're not easy. You've got teams that are scrapping for, for points at both ends, teams that want to get promoted, teams that are scrapping for the playoffs, and teams that are scrapping for their life down the bottom. So I really fear for them, unfortunately. And, and as Joby mentions, a trip to, to Blackburn for them first up under the new manager, Gerhard Struber. No win, as we say, since the opening day, so things looking tough down at Oakwell. Joby, let's turn our attention to, to the games now, and starting with Friday's match at Craven Cottage between Fulham and QPR. You're covering this match for Sky Sports as well. Should we be expecting an exciting game, given both sides' brands of football? Yeah, I'd love to think so. I hope I'm not going to put a big jinx on it and we'll, we'll get a nil-nil, but you wouldn't think so given the way the team's set out, very much um, an attacking philosophy from from both teams. Both teams score lots of goals, quite open at times. You, you only have to look at QPR. I think they're the only team actually in the, in the country that haven't kept a clean sheet this season. So I think they've conceded the second highest amount of goals again. So you would expect Fulham at home, particularly off the back of a, a real disappointing last performance at home but they lost 3-0 to, to really come out and try and get after QPR a brilliant game and one I'm, I'm certainly looking forward to covering Jamal we've we talked before on this podcast about Fulham having that immense attacking threat of course but only one goal in the last three matches do you think teams have maybe started to work them out do you think not really I just really don't think they've clicked this season to be honest they've, they've been really inconsistent and I really just put it down to the team actually not clicking and these things can happen 
obviously Scott Parker have brought in, brought in a couple of new recruits and all the rest of it. But with their attacking threat, I just I think that's the, the way they attack and who they've got in their front line is good enough to go and hurt anybody. I mean, look at their captain, Tom Kearney. I mean, he's he's a fantastic footballer, so gifted. Got Mitrovic up top, who's really a, a Premier League striker. Um, he's a handful on any day for, for any defence. Then you've got Anthony Knockhart and Cavalero like, on the wings. And I just, I honestly, really and truly, I just don't think they click. And I think when they do, I think it will be a problem for, for any team that they, they come up against. So I just think it's, and I know Scotty's under, under, under a bit of pressure right now, but if he can get them to click sooner rather than later, then I, I, will, I do think that they will find themselves climbing up, climbing up the league. An awful lot of pressure on Scott Parker to, to deliver this season as well, Joe. But do you think he can handle it? Probably fair to say they, they've not really managed to get a run of results together so far this season, as Jamal mentions. First of all, I think he, he can very much handle it. Um, I'm a little bit in the opposite camp. And again, you know, it's a, a big club, you know, big expectations, particularly having coming down last year. You know, they've got a, a fantastic squad, some of the players... Jamal mentioned there, you know, as an attacking force, players that would grace the Premier League, you know, comfortably and, and do really well at, the, at that level. Um, but you look at, again, you look at the table, you look at the team that they're vying against, you know, the West Broms, the Leeds, Swansea, you know, not a massive, massive football club. So no club's got a divine right to be there. I think he's a, a really good, promising young manager. And I, for one, and you know, for someone who is looking potentially to go down that route at some time, it's, it's great for, to see a young English manager given an opportunity at a big club um, and it's a really long long season and I don't think their start's been that bad you know if you turn a couple of those draws into wins you know you're talking you know an extra four points you know look where they'd be right right at the top so um, I think again give him time I'm sure the players are getting to grips with with how he wants to work it is a tough league. I think their possession, you know, they love to dominate games. It's just about using the ball well enough to create enough opportunities. And as the season goes, that's going to be the challenge because teams are looking, you know, how can we stop them being as effective? And I think that's caused that little bit of inconsistency. But he made a really big point last week um, or last time out, sorry, against Birmingham, you know, to win ugly, go away from home, win 1-0. It's not all going to be pretty football and to get promoted and get out of this league, you have to be able to do that. So he's obviously aware of that and I think that will serve him and the team well for the remainder of the season. It feels as if the wheels are coming off a bit for QPR, doesn't it, in, in terms of how they've started the, the season. You know, a strong start, of course. No win in the last four. Is that their leaky defence catching up on them, do you think? Yeah, I think if, you put, if, you, if you're a team that concedes goals as often as they do, I think you're always going to struggle, no matter how well you are going forward, because teams, they'll just punish you. And uh, you've got to do everything in your, in, in your nature to keep a clean sheet. But they seem to be struggling. They've gone from going a four at the back and they've gone, it seems that they've gone to a five at the back. And, but that doesn't seem to have helped in the last couple of games. So to, for them to maintain that, that promotion charge, which I'm sure that they'll be after, they do need to stop leaking goals. Joe, it'll be formidable strike force, though, in Hugel and Wells, like we've touched on before. But in Iberieze, they've got something special there, haven't they? Oh, most definitely. He's a player that I'm really, really excited about. You know, love watching him play. He just seems to find those pockets on the pitch and get turned. And he's so positive, so direct. He seems to just float across the surface, really. And, you know, what he's done this year is he's been productive, you know, with his goals, with his assists. And... Again, he's somebody that I really enjoy watching. He can light up any match and I'm sure he's got a massive future. You know, again, a young player getting an opportunity to play regularly. It's going to really help his development, you know, in an environment that he's comfortable in. And I think we're seeing the results of that. You know, obviously the two boys up top, you know, Naki, Naki Wells and, and Hugo have, have been really good. And I think that frees him up. You know, they, they push forward and create those pockets and, and opportunities for him to get on the ball. So really looking forward to seeing him in, in action as well. I don't think it's just him that, that teams are, are worried about as well. They've got Ilias Chair, who's yeah. another, he's a fantastic footballer. I mean, he was he was at uh, Stevenage half the season with me last season. And and I don't often big players up the way. I've bigged him up. He is, he is some footballer. He's got so much natural ability and talent. And I just think him and Eze, they just complement each other fantastic. Yeah, definitely. I think that's the type of player when you, you know, Mark Warburton, you know, again, we speak about being open, 
really wanting players to go and hurt teams and it's just getting the balance right between maybe not having too many of them and, you know, making sure that the door's locked up the other end so they can go and get those results. But, you know, they're certainly a good team to, to watch. Yeah. Well, well, Jamal, as you'll have seen last season, Ilias Chair's obviously got a great goal in his locker as well. But um, looking at this match, Fulham have lost one of their last seven league matches against QPR. So the odds are in their favour when looking at, at the history books. Now moving on to another huge game in the hunt for promotion as Forrest travel to uh, Bristol City. When you're taking on a promotion rival, does the mindset have to be that you can't lose, especially in these sort of games, Joby? Yeah, I mean, I've been in these occasions a, a few times over my career when you, you know you're vying for promotion against another team and I would certainly have that mindset it's not a negative one of course you want to win and of course you want to beat your rivals but when you're in a league that is so tight and it can come down to sometimes a point or two points in terms of getting in the playoffs or getting automatic promotion it's just one less game that you have to try and catch teams up so that would certainly be my intention maybe more for the away team you know going away and and, and trying to Make sure you don't lose. Of course, there's more emphasis on the team playing at home to win the game in front of their, their home fans. But yeah, I think at this stage of the season, you just don't want to be losing down to the teams around you. And um, I'm sure that'll be in, in both teams thinking this time out. Jamal, as you spoke about last week, your club, Bristol City, riding high after that win in the seven-side derby. Despite having the week off, how much confidence will they have gained from a derby win like that? It's funny. No matter how, how your form is at that time, whether it's good, bad or indifferent, a win like that in a local derby, that just it just breeds the whole club with so much so much confidence, so much so much laughter and happiness for that week. And yeah, they've they've had a week off, but it just gives a buzz around the place and uh, there's no pressure to go into the next game. You can enjoy your week off. Um so yeah, it's brilliant and they'll they'll definitely be going into the next game filled with confidence against Forest, knowing that Obviously, they had a tough game against Cardiff. Come away with a win, and they'll just be looking to build on it. Yeah, Joby, obviously, Forrest had that similar experience as well after they beat Derby. But looking at Bristol City's results so far this season, they, they seem to be grinding out points more than they have done in previous seasons. Could that be the difference for Lee Johnson this year? Yeah, I would say so. I think, again, it comes from that experience, that know-how of, of being in the league. And I think for Bristol, we've spoken about them a couple of occasions earlier in the season, maybe this being that year that they uh, get that place in the playoffs at least. You know, they've been steadily improving over the years. Obviously, eighth place last year, missed the playoffs by, I think it was four points, something like that. So coming back to my previous points, you can see how important every point is. And I think picking up those draws along the way, they've only lost two games this year. So they're obviously a team that's really hard to beat. And it's about accumulating points, keeping that tally ticking over throughout the season. You're not always going to play great. You know, you're going to have games that you just got to dig results out in. And I think so far, Bristol have been able to do that. So come the end of the season, you know, they wanted to be in, at least in that top six. And I think if they keep up this form and limit the losses, then they've got a very, very good chance of doing that. Jamal, last week we talked about Forrest being one of the surprise packages of the season so far. They're also the only team in the pack with that game in hand. How crucial could that be for them going forward? Yeah, huge. Um, Job just touched on accumulating as many points as possible and that that win that that win with that from that game in hand that would jump them up to I think it's second in the table if, obviously if um if results go their way over the weekend and stuff but yeah them games in hand sometimes they can be a gift and a curse because you 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 you're putting so much pressure on yourself but if you can be relaxed come away with the three points and that means you're you're right in and amongst it so yeah they'll they'll definitely be looking to that and to be capitalising on that. Joby, Lewis Graben, a striker back in form as well, picking up the winner against Derby. How crucial is it having someone like that who you can rely on to, to get the goals in the box, of course? Oh, it's, for me, one of the most important things for a team that is going to get promotion, whether it's automatic or, or get in the playoffs. And for me, he is as good as there is, you know, certainly at this level. He scores goals wherever, he, wherever he's been, and you only have to look at, some of the previous clubs, he's a player that can obviously handle that pressure when you look at Aston Villa, Sunderland, you know, promoted with Norwich, promoted with Bournemouth. So he's been there, done it. And I think as a, a fellow player, knowing that that guy's there to stick the ball away, you know, again, we might not have had the best game. We might not have created loads of chances, but when that opportunity comes up, we'll, we'll stick the ball away. And 
I watched them against Wigan earlier in the season and they really, really missed him. Rafa Mir was playing and had a couple of really good opportunities that, in my opinion, Lewis Graban takes one of those and it could be a different result. So I, for one, would, would always have him in my side and I think he gives them a real threat you know, going forward, not just with his goals, but he's a very positive runner, gets in behind teams and forces teams on the back foot. So he's going to be really, really key in, in what, Forest do this year. Well, Forrester actually winless in their last six visits to Ashton Gate, so a result in Bristol is long overdue for them. Now moving on to the Sunday game between Middlesbrough and Hull. Jamal, no win in nine matches for Middlesbrough. They look to be in that relegation battle, of course. For a club the size of Borough, does that still have to be the mindset of, of the players that they are in that battle? I think we've, we've touched on it a bit today. Um, just that the league's not kind to anybody, no matter if you're Barnsley or if you're Middlesbrough. It's unfortunate for a club like of Middlesbrough's size and stature, um, because really and truly they are a Premier League club. But you could say that about probably 80-90% of the teams in the Championship. Yeah, it's unfortunate for for Woodgate because I think he, he's got a lot to offer as a manager. But they do find themselves down there, and the realization is that they're in a, they're really in relegation battle at the minute, and it's so important that they start digging themselves out and picking up points really really sharply. So I just think that with the game this weekend against Hull, it's a massive, it's a massive game at home that they have to go and really be looking to get the three points. Joby, does Jonathan Woodgate maybe have to take inspiration from a side like Hull? I know they lost last time out to West Brom, but three wins on the spin before that has taken them right back up that table. Yeah, of course. I think when you're in a position as they are, you have to try and take inspiration from as many sources as you can. And I think, obviously, Hull's run... Some brilliant results in that, you know, beating Fulham, beating Derby, beating Forest. I'm sure, being brutally honest, they probably wouldn't have expected nine points from from those three games. But it shows it is possible. The biggest thing for me between the two teams would be that confidence that those three wins would give you um, versus not winning nine where, again, it can just drain out of the players. You know, those opportunities are not quite taken and... He needs a win. He needs a result you know, as soon as possible just to, again, get out of that position they're in to start with and, and start getting a bit of confidence back in the players because it's a difficult time to be down there. Once you start getting in and around Christmas, the games come thick and fast and you're now looking at the second half of the season thinking, well, we really need to get out of this. And again, that's where it can be really difficult. So, you know, Woodgate needs a result very, very soon. No goals in five games for British on Bologna before two against QPR last time out, Jamal. I mean, we talked about the importance of Lewis Graben with, with Joby just, just a moment ago. How much of a boost will that be for, for British on Bologna's confidence? And how much do Borough need him to continue to fire now? Yeah, he's massive for them. He's a natural goal scorer and he'll score goals wherever he is. And Bar really need him to, to start firing again. Um, and he will. Um, strikers, that happens with them. They, they go through barren, barren patches where... They're not scoring goals and people start to doubt them and all the rest of it. And literally all it takes is that one goal. In, in his case, it was a couple of goals the other day. And hopefully he just he just gets back to doing what he does best because he is a natural, natural goal scorer. I mean, I played I played with one. I remember when I was at South End under Freddie Eastwood and he literally would do nothing for 60, 70, 80 minutes and then end up scoring two goals. And, you, and it was literally every game. And I think he's definitely the same. He is that type of player that... You put him in front of goal and he is scoring goals. Hull seem to be in a similar position, Joby. He's having a similar reliance, rather, on Jared Bowen and Kamal Grisicki. Have you ever found a player you've clicked with like that? Yeah, I've been lucky to, to play with some really good, good strikers, top strikers. The, the thing for me as a, a winger or attacking player that I always look out for and makes my job easier is, is players' movement in front of me. And, and then it's just about me trying to deliver that ball or that pass and... You know, again, I've, I've been fortunate to play with some real top strikers. Andy Johnson I had a, a really good relationship with in our, our time at Palace. Marlon King also at, at Watford. Shane Long at Reading. And Macaulay Bond probably more recently, you know, someone who so willing makes really good positive runs and then also takes those half chances that make you look a little bit better as a winger where the cross isn't exactly perfect, but they've got the ability and the know-how to, to stick the ball in the back of the net. So, yeah, I think... When you get that understanding with someone, it just makes both your jobs easier and you just go out there and, and really enjoy playing with them. 
Jamal, do you fear for Hull though now in January trying to keep hold of them both, Grzycki and Bowen? They must be attracting a lot of interest based on what they've done so far this season. Yeah, like um, 100%. The form that they're in, you're always going to have people wanting to take your best players and, and they have been in fine form. But if Hull do want to do anything, it's about trying to convince the two boys to, to, to stay there at least until the summer to see where they, where they end up. But 100% Grant McCann will be looking to keep hold of his best players, especially where they are in the league now. They're, they're in touch and distance. And they'll be thinking, if I can just keep hold of them, maybe add one or two just to help them out. And who knows where they could end up. But the 100% the, the, the club um, hold, the, the board and, and the manager will 100% be looking to keep hold of his best players. Well, some hope for Borough fans looking at the stats. Middlesbrough have won... 19 of the last 21 home league games against Hull City. So if they are going to get a result, stats are in the favour this weekend. Moving on to our feature game in Skybet League 1, though. Sunderland taking on Coventry, Job. It doesn't sound like a, a League 1 fixture, this, does it? But what's it like being one of the bigger teams in a division which the fans must feel like they must be above? I know you, you've obviously experienced something similar with Lytton Orient last season, of course. Yeah, it's quite a dangerous mindset to have as a either as a club or as a fan base, because particularly, you know, the Championship, League One, League, they're really, really difficult divisions to get out of. And you have to be consistent, but you have to also treat all the other teams with respect, because as we have seen you know, with the last Sunderland, on any particular day, if you're not quite right, you're going to get beaten. And I think it's that's where the mindset comes into it. And that can come down from the fans, whether it be, you know, you might be drawing a game that you they feel you should be winning and there's a few murmurs and it can get players edgy or could be that you just take a point sometimes and they expected you to win. But again, for me, it's just that mindset and, and not expecting to beat teams just because of who you are or what you've done in the past. And every other team that comes to play against them, you know, they're going to bring their A game. You know, they are a massive club in that league and, and every player wants to stand out and perform. So it can be difficult, but I think if your mindset is right, then, you know, you can get your way through it. Jamal, looking at Sunderland, though, Phil Parkinson hasn't had the best possible start to life in the hot seat and crashed out of the FA Cup in midweek, of course. But could that be a blessing in disguise for them now, you know, not having any distractions? Yeah, most definitely. I think I think for the club, the board, when they when they when they appointed him, the sole goal would be that they want promotion. Um, crashing out of the FA Cup, if we're gonna if we're gonna be honest, probably not got any chance of, of, of winning it or anything like that. So they will be looking solely to be getting out of the league and back into the championship where they feel they belong. Not the best start, but it's never easy, you know, going into a big club like that. And the expectations are so high and all the rest of it. So it's, it, sometimes it is a blessing in the skies that everything else around you is like in terms of cup competition and um, you're out and you can just solely focus purely on the league and picking up results and, and getting out of the league. Yeah, Joby Coventry had a... A bit of a wobble after a strong start to the season, but things look to be back on track now. Just how good a job is Mark Robbins doing for them based on the circumstances he's had to deal with? Oh, it's an incredible job. You know, when you see the results they've had and, and where they are in the table now, up to third, and, you know, it's phenomenal, really, with all the issues. You know, there'd be plenty of excuses to be made, um, whether it be not, you know, playing at home, but he's clearly not allowed them to, to creep into the place and you know, giving them a real direction and a purpose and, and a way of playing. We've had some brilliant results this year and, you know, it's always difficult going back. You know, everyone says, you know, not to go back and particularly after doing so well in his first spell, you know, an incredible record really there, 51% win ratio, which is, is through the roof really. And he may have felt he, he left too early. Um, obviously, it was an opportunity that, you know, he couldn't turn down at that time. And I'm sure he wants to really make a go of it this time round and, He's certainly doing that. So, again, just a massive thumbs up to, to what he's doing down there. And, you know, I'm sure they'll be all hoping that he can continue that good work. Plymouth and Bradford, also two big hitters down in Skybet League 2. Based on what you've seen this season, who's best equipped to go back up? Obviously, both managers have experience of promotion back from League 2. Do you know what? I, I honestly think they both got the tools to do it. I know Ply Plymouth are languishing around the mid-table area and all the rest of it, but I honestly think in Ryan Lowe, he's got he's got the the tools to get his teams promoted. I love the way he got Barry playing last year. They played some unbelievable football, and I think he's doing that that with Plymouth. And 
Although, like I said, they're languishing around the mid-table area, I do think they've got a strong chance. And um, with Bradford, they're in a great, great position that they're in now, third in the league. They've got great attacking for it, for a League Two side. And I just think that they'll be definitely in and around that come the end of the season. Joby, a win for, for Plymouth would take them just a point away from Bradford, actually, up in third. How important is it that they especially don't lose this one if they are going to challenge? Yeah, it's massively important. You know, they don't lose touch. Uh, you know, they're just outside the playoffs, you know, four points below Bradford. So if they could get a win, you know, it brings them right up into those playoff places. Um, but again, if they, they did lose, then that gap starts to creep up a little bit more and they fall a little bit further into that, that midfield pack. So, you know, as Jamal said, they've got a real good way of playing. I think Ryan Lowe's done a, a fantastic job really open, expansive type of football, which, you know, is very pleasing. And we certainly have struggled with that a couple of occasions this year. So I do fancy them to be there or thereabouts Plymouth this year. It's just about, again, the key word for any of these leagues is that consistency to, to win games. Jamal, five wins in the last six now for Bradford. With, with the know-how of Gary Boyer in this division, obviously you mentioned Ryan Lowe's promotion last year, but Gary Boyer promoted with Blackpool previously, of course, as well. Do they look like a side who, if, if you do finish above them, you do get that promotion? It seems that way, because he is a manager. It seems like he, he knows how to win. And like you said, he, he, he got promotion with Blackpool and he's, he's, he's well on the, on the way to, to hopefully doing that with Bradford as well. And it does seem if you're, if you're a team that can finish above them, that you've got an unbelievable chance of going up. The job that he's done so far there has is, is, is been remarkable because they have been a a club in, in, in decline in the last few years. They've been not found their identity in a while. And uh, I think he's found that and uh, he's rubber stamped the way that he wants to play. He's brought in some 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 great players for this level and hopefully they, they can maintain that. And Job's just, just touched on it there. Consistency is key. And it seems that they, they have that. They've got a wealth of experience and come the end of the season, and that, that, will, that will stand in good stead. Well, it should be a cracking match, guys. Once again, thanks for your time and have a good weekend. Cheers, Cheers ben. ben. Top man, mate. The official EFL podcast. The best reaction to all the match action. Available every week.